Well, here we are in our still site. Marco, Bob, and I, as you can see, we camoed it all up. It's getting a little windy, so we decided to, to light us a fire. Just keep us warm while we're out here. We could be out here for a couple days running this uh, shine. You can see the stills here set up. About to pour the mash in the barrel and start cooking. And we'll get back to you uh, when we start doing that. Uh, there's our still, there's our pot still. There's Marco Bob. Hey, Marco Bobby. How we doing? How we doing? All right, so now Marco, Bobby, and I are going to uh, take the mash out of these buckets. And we're going to pour it into our stills. This has been sitting for six days. Six days now. So let's go ahead and test it. This is always exciting. Oh, look at that. Woo! It looks like a vomit bucket, but you don't even know it's so good so good what we're gonna do is we we'll go ahead and taste this real quick now when you know that your mash is done when the yeast eats all the sugars and turns it into alcohol what will happen is your mash will have a sour taste to it if it's sweet i mean it ain't done running right michael that's right let's go ahead and let's dip our hands in here that's nice and sour oh. It tastes like a nice wine. Well, that's as sour as it can get right there. That might have been made in Napa. We don't know, but you know, shit. That's a nice sour mat. Oh, I can still taste that sour. That's good. There. That's good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pour, we're going to fill up our uh, eight gallon uh, bucket here. This one here. All the way to about the 90% the, the mark. And then we'll, uh, we'll fill the rest, uh, we'll use the rest of our mash in our thumps kegs. So that's what the mashes looks like. So at the top, it does look like vomit stuff, man. Mm -hmm. All right, Marco Bobbies, let's uh, let's let's start pouring that mash in our barrel here. Now here we go. We're gonna strain out, you know, this little stuff that we don't want in there. All we want is the, the liquid. Uh, we don't want a lot of chunks. You don't want to end up scorching anything. So we got this here strainer here that's picking up, doing a real good job. Perfect. Good job, Marco Bobby. Yeah, just keep it going a little bit more. I'm gonna tell you when to stop because there's a lot of chunk in here. Nope. No, nope, keep going. Just a little bit more. A little chunky down there to me. Alright, stop. So right about there. Okay. I'm That's beautiful. I'm telling you, it smells like good wine. It smells like it's, a nice Cabernet like, Sauvignon it, or whatever they call it. It does but, smell like a good Pinot Noir. Uh, <laughs> Pinot Noir. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna That's double called strain. a double strain right there. That's called a double one, two strain. Like wearing a condom. Uno dose strain. It's like wearing a condom and she's got a birth control pill in her. And plan B the next morning. So it's yeah. It's like wearing a condom when she's already pregnant. That's exactly <laughs> what we're doing right here. We're trying to fill the pots. Damn, that's good. It is, isn't it? That so beer is so, so good. good. You, you drink enough of that, you're going to get oh, silly. Oh, yeah. You drink enough of that, you're going to get silly. And I don't need no help with that. No, you, you know. don't. Okay. Folks, we're draining this pot. We're getting just the liquids with no solids in our main cook pot so that we don't have any uh, issues with scorches. Okay? Yeah, it'll affect the flavor. You know, just you gag on you, it. You you go, we don't want this. No it's no I'm good. Doing. You know, nobody wants a burnt steak. But hang out for a minute, and I'm going to show you we can use this chunky stuff, plus some fresh fruits, in our thump cake. We will reuse. So now we're gonna fill our thump cakes. What I likes to do, what Marco Bobby's and I likes to do, is to fill our thump cakes with our mash. Some people likes to use water. Some likes waters. But what it can do is strips the alcohols levels. It can do that, and, and flavor too. We're also going after some flavor. And so what we're doing is, in the thump kegs, we're putting in our, our mash, our beer. We're also going to add the backings from our last run, and some fresh fruit, right? Fresh fruit, we got some nice fresh strawberries and bananas we're gonna throw in there. That's what I like. And the flavor will just be fantastic at the end. That's right. 73 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what the moonshine is made by the I love it. We've heard some arguments that putting fruit or putting 
uh, your, your beer in your thumb keg doesn't necessarily add flavor. It is not a gin basket. That's right. Uh, that's a different thing. But in my uh, experience, experience <laughs> from like running column stills mm -hmm. and reflux stills yep, yep. to you... running a good old pot still is, I believe that it does enhance the flavor. I believe so too. By putting them flavors in them pumpkins. I believe so too. And yep. you know, the proof is in the pudding shine. It is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. Oh, pudding and shine. The, well, no, we made the bananas pudding. Well, we'll put it on the pudding shine. For our friend okay, Kate, we made the bananas pudding. Right, right, we made the bananas right, bread right, out right, of moonshine. Right. Chocolate pudding shine. Butterscotch shine. pudding shine. Vanilla pudding shine. Fucking not Strawberry pudding right shine. Now. Key lime pudding. Key shine. lime pudding. Oh fuck, key lime. Key Who doesn't lime love man's Who, pudding? Oh, key lime moonshine pie. Sound good to me. Mm -hmm. All right, let's. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this thump kegs up. Let's go ahead and pour that. Dump, in the, here. Go ahead dump and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Rest in here. And we want this. We're gonna go half yeah, three to quarters. two thirds full. You know, we're gonna get all that with in our there. With thump kegs. Now, what I got here. This is our backings from the last run. What some like to call it tails. Which is the tails. You're right. Thank you for explaining to our viewers that they're also <laughs> called the tails. Get that about good, I think. Uh, a little more? A little bit more. A little bit little. Oh, stop. Yeah. Right there. Um, this, is, this is potable liquor right here. Well, I'm going to have to tell you that myself. Can, can I give any opinion if it's potable or Ooh. not? Oh, it's hot. Woo! Woo! Well, that that's, smells good. That's got a Granny Smith that's, and banana peel right there at the front of your fucking teeth. Wow, you, know you. Mule. Holy shit. Shit it off. Shit it off. Shit it off. Yeah. Shit it off. Shit it off. Don't make you do that. So, we're going to put Damn. this back into our tails, the, the, the very last of our run that we saved. We're going to put this in our thump keg as well. Let's go ahead and put the back ends in there. There we go. And it looks like... I want to say, let's just add some nice fruit. Let's do that. Fresh fruit. Over here, we got a bucket of strawberries let's we just cut. Fresh old there. strawberries. We got some manners there, too. Yep. Now that we got this fold up, filled up, got our backings in it, got our mash in there, got our pot ready, we're going to set everything up, link everything up, and, uh, and then we'll be right back with you. All right? Well, you just hang in there. Country red. Country red. All right, now Marco Bobby's. Let's uh, let's let's show these viewers this this good old still. Oh, I had to stoke up the fire here. It was starting to go a little. Get nice and warm. Now. Yeah. Oh shit. Good. Okay. Yeah, that is a nice warm fire there. That's okay. good wood. You burning with that cherry wood there? It's a little cherry, little almond, some pine because we're up in the pine forest. So. It smells good. Mm -hmm. Smells good. There you go. So now that we uh we got our mash uh put into our eight gallon still here, and another two-thirds of our mash plus our back ends and some fresh fruit into this thump keg right here from the old creek down the way we we ran that trough remember about 300 yards worth of trough yes we did and hooked that up to a hose that goes back there you don't need to see that but that hose comes in here and goes to this here uh copper condenser uh you can see the inlet is right here at the bottom and the outlet is right there at the top. Now the reason why is we runs it that way is so that when the water is on, the pressure is continuously pushing it up the pipe. That's right. Instead of lazily flowing down the pipe and not filling completely full of waters. Well, why don't you tell them where this still came from, first of all? Come on. Okay, so this, this still, as you can tell, is very old, generations old. My grandpappy, he built this you can tell this is very old uh made out of stainless steel this was before copper was readily available it was retrofitted because he figured out what coppers does and what coppers does actually just so you know when you're running a steel there's a chemicals reaction with the the moonshine or the mash and copper and it takes out the sulfates and that's why you use copper. Not only at one point is it bendable and easy to build into a still, it actually ended up having a scientific reaction. We found this still, Marco, Bob, and I found this in my grandpappy's old shed. 
But when he passed away, he left the property to a sister-in-law's of mine and she wouldn't let us go over there because she didn't really like us because Marco Bob's got busy with her sister. <laughs> and, and, and history. That's just a rumor. That's just yeah, a sure rumor. Sure it is. Yeah. But history's been written and she never wanted us to go over there. Well, she she uh, she got rid of the property and so uh, Marco Bob's and I were able to go over there and we found Grandpappy's old still handmade from some old jugs, milk jugs when they used to have the milk delivery guys. Handmade. As you can see, this is real old. It used to have a copper cap on it, like you'd be used to seeing on a, a, a copper still. Right, Marco Bobby's? That's right. But it was missing. And and we said, well, how, we got the thump kegs. Uh, we got the condenser arms. Uh, and we got the cooker. But how are we going to connect the, the pot to the, to the thump kegs? So what was over in the corner of this barn, all buried up in some hay and the old tarp, was a 1986... YZ125 Yamaha dirt bike. And guess what fits perfect onto our stills? The good old two stroke dirt bike pipe. Now, we wills want to build our own copper's cap eventually. We'll, we'll put another uh, YouTube videos out on that probably when we upgrade to the stills. But this two stroke pipe worked perfectly, hooks up to our thump keg just the right way. Everything is tightened down and snug. It's starting to get warm here. And we're going to monitor it as we go. Uh, this usually, um, as we've run it in the past, usually takes about an hour and a half to start heating up to the point where uh, we get some moonshine. So we probably got about 25 minutes left. Starting to get warm right, right, right around here. So we'll get back to you with that. Oh, hello! <laughs> I film uh, my still it I'll make a moonshine or rice wine. Uh, a mako bobby it it Why am I crazy? You broke motherfucker. You make a rice wine. I make a good fry rice. We whip a railroad. Rail rum on my rice it it Now that the, the thump thumper is going and, and Marco Bob and I did our jigs, it's real hot right here, so I went ahead, since I felt the heat here, I went ahead and pumped that, uh, the water straight through our condenser, start cooling that down. And uh, before you know it, that water's, oh, look at this, Marco Bobby, look at this. Look, at we getting a drip, look at this, we starting to get a little drip over here. Huh? It's, it's barely just a, anything right there. Boop. We're going to start monitoring this, we're going to uh, control our heats. Turn our heats down, our water's up, our heat's up, our water's up until we get a nice flow coming out of this condenser. The thump keg is thumping. We're producing moonshine. If you take a look at this out here, you can see we're just barely squirting Let's out the condenser Let's have a peek. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see that there, Marco, Bobby? Oh, look at that. No, there, it's coming drizzling on down. Oh, there we go. Just, that's nice. It's all now, happening. Now, so what you see here is I've got this beaker set up. This beaker here is 100 milliliters. When you run a still about my size, you're supposed to throw away the first 50 plus milliliters. It's still your size, what's that, 350 pounds still? The good old eight gallon. And the mathematics say, and don't quote me on this, About 50 milliliters you're supposed to get rid of. That's the good old methanol that's coming out of this still first. That's the stuff that'll make you blind. It might kill you. It might make your, your mother-in-law look pretty enough to have sex with her. So we're going to get rid of this here. You can pretty good as you clean your nails off with it and, and such, but you, you know. You might actually take your nails off while trying to clean <laughs> this out. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to dump this out. Now we're going to get into what's called the, the heads or the four shots. Now that we've got rid of them, them, the methanols, the bad stuff, we're going to go ahead and uh, stick our good old trusty coon pecker in there. That's an actual raccoon pecker a bone. raccoon pecker. And what we do is we put this right here in the condenser, and then I'll control our flow. Anywhere that that raccoon pecker is sticking out. Oh, 
That's hot. That's hot, actually. We need more water. All right, so what we ran into when we went to go stick our good old coon pecker in there is we found out that uh, <clears throat> the liquid coming out of the still was warm. What might happen when you're running, when, you're, when your liquor comes out of the worm end or the condenser end, is it has a tendency sometimes to back back up the copper pipe. We put that good old coon peckers in there because the, the liquor will follow the coon pecker directly where it goes. So that, that's what the good old coon pecker does. Now the good thing was is when we put that coon pecker in, I noticed that my, my liquor output was warm. You never want that. You don't want warm liquor coming out the end of the condenser. You want cold liquor coming out. Instead, what we did was we did some adjustments. We turned up the we turned up the water a little bit. I turned it down the stills. The liquor coming out was cloudy. Now, if your liquor coming out of your pot still is cloudy, number one key, too hot. So we, like I said, so we, we ramped up our water. We turned down our stills till we got a nice good flow. It's a little slower, but it's nice and cold. And I think once this goes, ooh, 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 ooh. you can taste those nanners. Oh, go ahead and get you some little little finger oh, pull oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, holy shit! So w once this fills up, comes through what uh, what Marco Bobby was telling you. This is called a distiller's parrot. The the only thing that this distiller's parrots is for is, is so we can take an alcohol meter and we can monitor the alcohol level as it comes out of the still you don't need a you don't need a distiller's parrot but my grandpappy years ago when he built this stainless steel rig he decided he was going to get together all his old coors cans flip them inside out and make a, a distiller's parrot of them old coors cans so so we're going to use it uh, as a, uh, a an ode to grandpappy that, that's what we're about we're about the the tradition and family and making moonshine what is that <laughs> they call me leather dick look at my, this is my old leather dick how come you got something coming out your pants like that it's called painting <laughs> you call that's what you call that paint, paint brushing you call paint brushing hey mm -hmm. baby when he hooks up with a girl. It's not quite, it's not quite where it should be. It ain't quite where it should be. I'm going to paint you a little bit. And, just paint and then all of a down. sudden it's like that. It's like that all of a sudden. And then it does this. Running, stilling, distilling, chilling. We're feeling it. Going to be run, running this moonshine for probably, I'd say about the next four hours. At least. What do you think? I Pop think we're going to get some ribeyes and fucking fry them up and uh, shit. We we're going to be here for four hours. I mean, shit. The town's like, what, 16 miles away? Yeah. We'll take the quads down there. We can do that or side by side. Yeah, side yeah. by side. We can do that. I mean, I don't want to leave the still site. That's why we brought all our amenities out here, our seats and our I'm chairs hungry. and our tables I, and our I, barbecues. But you just fed me a nice salami sandwich. I'm good to go. I can go all night. Let's go. All right, well, let's, yeah. keep, let's keep on shining. This is beautiful, man. This is a beautiful thing Ooh. happening right now. Beautiful taste, nice and cold. We see that this distiller's parrots. What is this? What do you think this is, Marco Bobby's? If you were to guess, that's 150 proof. Right on the button. All right, Marco Bobby, what you doing? Okay, check it out. You see the sun's going down here? Yep. We got this nice copper jug right here full of hearts of love which we like to call it here at Country Red. Um, this is the good stuff. Yep, those okay. are them hearts. This copper gets rid of the sulfates and all that stuff, and we're going to start pouring it into some jars. Look now, at that. before you pour that, pull that copper jug out, why don't you put one of them glass you know, ones I'm underneath gonna it. Do, I'm going to be a little intoxicated. It's been there a long day. No, We've been doing it's some fine. tasting. Look, you do this 10 times. It does taste pretty good. Mm, good, 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 good. Okay, there we go. All right. There we go. We're gonna fucking fill these jugs go. up. There we go. We're gonna pour them in them jars there. You're spilling more than you're collecting. Well, shit, man. Come on now, Marco, Bobby. Man, not even full. Let's go a little more. Let's go a little more. We're a little slower. A little slower. 
Oh, look at that. Okay, look. This. So again, the, the what Marco Bobby was saying is the reason why we collect in that big copper jug is not because it looks fancies, but we, we want to introduce as much coppers uh, to the moonshine as we can because of the chemical reaction and the sulfates of getting rid of that kind of uh, bad flavors that you don't want. And since Grandpappy's Old Still was made mostly out of stainless steel and old uh, Coors Light cans, we need to introduce as much coppers. That's as we correct. Can. That is correct. In the fl it makes the flavor, and that flavor, really. That <laughs> so what's go? Uh, so how does it taste though? We haven't tasted it yet. Tastes like bananas in just banana goodness, man. Does it? It is good, good. That so it's got all the flavors that we need? We, it's got all the flavors we Here, need. Let me, let me try to see. Go ahead, take a swig. Me, I'm gonna give take me a, a swig, horn. tell me what you think. I'm going to give you a horn of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, what you think? Oh, shit, that's hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You pleased? Are you pleased? That's 150 proof. Are you pleased? Sure. Yeah. It's almost like eating a fucking chili pepper, man. So the reason there's so much flavor is because of this little guy right here that we shoved all that goodness in. Not just that, but also really? the mash that we made has so much uh, fruit in it, bananas, yeah. strawberries. There's a lot of love in the it. The whole nine. And <clears throat> you got to realize that anybody can make mash. But it's how you run your still. If you don't run your still right, you won't come out with good liquor. Here at Country Rad, we runs our stills right. Nice and slow. You want to do is it nice and slow. We're looking for quality. We're looking for qualities, not quantities. Hey, Marco Bob, what are you reading? What's up, James? Why do you keep calling me James? J Jibs. Jibs? Oh, Jibs. My name is Blowjobs. <laughs> Blowjobs. What are you reading? All oh, this fantastic literature. Batty riddles. I love them batty riddles. May I read you a riddle? Yeah, please. Please do. Why did the baseball player strike out? I don't know. He was using the wrong bat. Why did mom bat hate the letter R? I don't know, why? Because it turned her baby into a brat. Oh, a brat. From a bat to a brat. Oh. It tastes great. Nope, it smells. Nice and sweet, nice and fruity. It smells good. Just like our shine should. And then after it settles down, it'll even be better. You know, everything settles down, it's a little better. Well, so there's a whole deal about proofing down. And when you proof down, say like, we're running right now at 150. Yep. And then once you have that good old spring water, yep. different flavors come out. Different, yeah. I different can, flavors come out at different alcohol levels, right? Mm. So right now it's really banana strong. Watch it is. Them. It is. Watch and even at 150, down. that's really banana strong, dude. I'll show you. Once we proof it down with that good old spring water, the strawberries will start to come out. At different proofs, different flavors come out. So proofing down is not just to make it potable, which it is. Right. But... There's a science behind proofing down and bringing out sure, the flavors that you're looking sure. for. Sure, just like just like cooking a fucking steak and let it rest and all that shit. Everything, you, you, right? No, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You know, time. So we'll, we'll prove it down. You, you gotta have patience, man. Patience is key. It's a virtue. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's also that. What is the first fucking line in that song? Oh my god, it's killing me. Um, the first line in that song is. We are making moonshine. <laughs> oh, 
That's not the right song. I know. Sitting on the deck. Yeah, dude, do you see that? What? <laughs> the pig flipped three times and went right in that. Your thing. pig went right down there? Dude, no it, fucking way. It, it, it did a 350 <laughs> triple flick, triple flick back spin. It was, it was like some skate shit and went, boom! Right it's down. Snowboarded its way right down there. Oh my How god. Are you get that? <laughs> What's happening now in this in this part of the run is the alcohol level is starting to drop. It started at 150s. And we just keep tasting it. It's very flavorful. But what we do taste when we start tasting it is like an isop propyl alcohol taste it's a rubbing alcohol taste that's when we know we need to make our cuts so we're going to go ahead and cut this off a big thing about moonshinings is tasting 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 you can't call yourself a good distiller unless you can make your cuts by flavor and taste capturing the back ends we'll keep those and we'll put them back in our thunk keg next time uh, Marco Bob and I decide to do another run. Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Hey there, YouTubers. Thanks again for watching Country Rad. Thank you. Appreciate you watching us run our moonshine strawberry banana moonshine run. Hope you learned something. I want you to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and please leave us a comment because, Marco Bobby, what happens well, if you leave a creative comment? The most creative comment's gonna win one of these nice country red hats. We're gonna sign it. We're gonna it, sign it. Blowjob, Mark Bob, and even Miss J. Our director, baby, might sign a little uh, it's Jolene Bob on the bottom. So get creative, too. leave us a little something, something, and uh, you're gonna win this. Yep, that's all you're gonna get. You're gonna get you a signed. Country Rad, Blowjob, Mark Bob, Lean Bob. Hat to take home. Yep. Like this. It's a nice hat. It's a nice hat. It is a nice hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Peace. <laughs>